There's someone out here who knows a lot about sound. Dr. Vasu Devan. Maybe she can help. Right, that's fine. Let's take a break. That was very beautiful, but it doesn't exactly help me concentrate. I'm trying to find out what medium sound travels through, but all I can hear is their music. You were sitting in a concrete room with a closed, solid wooden door. That's right, and I can hear myself think. Well, there. Two more materials the sound can travel through. Wood and solid concrete. I never thought about that. How does sound do that? Travel through a solid concrete wall? Let me show you something. A music box? Go to that corner of the hall. You'll find some equipment I have left over there for an experiment. There's no scientific equipment over here, just a tin and string. That's it. Can you hear the music box? No, no chance. OK. Now put the tin to your ear. No problem. Just like a string telephone. Exactly the same. You see, not only does sound travel through solids, it actually travels through some solid objects better than it does through air. Each of these dancers represents a particle of a solid. They could be string particles or concrete particles. Because they are a solid, these particles are in fixed positions and are very close together. So when one particle vibrates, it makes the particle next to it vibrate and so on. So the sound travels very well through the material. Why did we need a tin at the end of the string? The vibrations passing along the string were still very small very low amplitude. Not enough to cause sufficient vibrations in the air for the sound to reach your ears. But when they reach the tin, so pop it on there, they cause the surface of the tin to vibrate and the larger surface area of the tin meant that larger vibrations of the air reached my ear. That's right. It's called an amplifier because it's amplified the sound. 